a machine connected with your computer can print solid objects designed by you. Few years before, they said it's the future. We are living in it and we are going fast into it. But before going into 3D printing, so I like to uh, speak about the history of manufacturing. Back in 17th, 16th centuries, everything, every product is handmade. Whether we take it as a pottery, whether it is a metal item, whether it is a carpentry item, everything is handmade. So there are some industrial revolutions happened in the world. The first industrial revolutions is happened when somebody invented the first very machine. It is, in, it is invented for textile industry. The first machine invented is a sewing machine. And at the same time, steam engine was invented. So when steam engine powered textile industry, there is a revolution happened in the world. People started thinking, I have to invent machine for everything. Today in this room, if you notice, we are using machine for everything. So that first industrial revolution is a revolution where people started thinking about making machines for everything. After a long time, we, we advanced with the help of steam engine, we have come up with steam uh, trains and a lot of transportation increase, a lot of machineries. The whole world is advanced into manufacturing and the economy is booming. But the second revolution happened really when Henry Ford introduced something called production line. So when you have demand in the market and if you can't produce enough faster, there is a problem. Henry Ford introduced a simple concept, machines and people side by side on a line, on a production line where you could produce things faster. So the whole economy is booming again. We are producing faster, the whole world is changing a lot. At the same time, even electricity is introduced. The, the whole world is changing. But after a long time, there are so many things happened, but after a long time, there is a third revolution has happened. There is two things which is part of third industrial revolution. One is an internet, and the second one is manufacturing going digital. So what is the power of manufacturing going digital? So manufacturing is always a luxury thing. If today, if you talk about a kid in Africa, somewhere in a rural place, can he, can he invent a product? Won't it be a stick and a rubber band? No. Can he, can he invent actually a proper good looking product? There is an issue. So when 3D printing is introduced, that is the first time in the world where the machineries or the technologies invented for people, like every major technology in the world is introduced in defense and then it comes down to people. But 3D printing is the only technology where people were in mind. It was made into desktop consumer machines, given to all the schools, all the product designers, architects, movies, aerospace, everywhere. The whole manufacturing was trending, getting revolutionized because everybody could make a product just like how you print a paper. So that was the third revolution. And who am I? Why am I speaking here? I like to share a bit about my persistent journey. I grown up in I born in Trichy, Tamil Nadu. I grown up in a town called Paramalur, and I've got my engineering and mechanical engineering in Loyola College, Chennai. And I got this opportunity to undergo an exchange program where we went to France, we learned some French, we had some cultural thing, and we had this one month beautiful project of to make a 3D printer from scratch. This I'm talking about 10 years before, 2014, where the technology was booming there. The, the good thing about the project is, in the laboratory, every single part of 3D printer is built. From the nut and bolt to carpentry to silicon molding to every part of the printer is made in the laboratory, assembled over there, tested over there, and we even brought back one. I had no idea that this technology is going to haunt me back one day and going to make me start a company. But I came to Hyderabad, I, I always have this, I always love this person, you know, Kalam, Dr. Kalam. Back in 10 years before, there is nothing called startup ecosystem, right? We, we, are, we are living in a startup ecosystem where today if you go to your parents and say, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start a startup, father, what do you think? Maybe he's going to love the idea. He's going to maybe tap your back and say, you know, like, come on, kid, I'm going to fund you also. But if I say that to my parents, they'll not like it 10 years before. There is no startup ecosystem. Um, you know, like, I've started the company with the vision. I didn't say to my parents. It's been six months. I was acting like I'm still working in a company. And, uh, but how do I got the idea? I was searching for, I was working in a company for nine months in a startup in Hyderabad. I got my first design job in Hyderabad, that is why I came to Hyderabad. And I was keep on every night, I'm thinking about an idea, what should I do? What, what product should I do? And you know, people say, when you got this eureka moment, wow, aha moment, you, you cannot sleep. The dream is something 
which is not when you get it in sleep, it, it will not make you sleep, right? I had this exact same moment at 3 a.m. in a night where I got this idea of why not 3D printers? Like mar in market, there are less 3D printers. I know how to make a printer. Why can't I build a printer and sell it in the market? So one day midnight at 3 a.m., I got this idea. Believe me, I can't walk, I can't sleep for another three hours. I was walking like a mad person in my parking slot back and forth because I got this idea. I, I, it was making a lot of sense to me because if you want to succeed in a startup, you have to always choose a futuristic technology, not something which is already existing, the something which has 10 year, 20 year, next 50 year growth, right? I every everything, every in the thing in the checkbox was ticked in, ticked about 3D printing. I got this idea, we started the company, but I started alone with very limited funds. I only gathered funds enough to buy a printer, start doing training, because that is the only way where you could meet people, get a lot of uh, customers, and then I could, I could help that segment fund my R&D. But I got stuck in a problem. I was only doing training. I was not able to start my R&D for nine months. I was in a frustrated uh, mindset, what am I doing? You know, it's been nine months, I didn't say to my parents, what am I doing here? All I was doing is training and it was very early for 3D printing in India. I believed in 3D printing, but it was so early where, you know, uh, I should really gather people, I should really fund people to fund my project, right? And I decided, uh, I was very frustrated at a point, but I got a very wonderful call from a university in Punjab. They said, Kamal, uh, we love this technology. Why can't you come and do a workshop for my whole college? I went for a one week program. I did, I taught 3D printing for every classroom in the college. And that gave me a biggest motivation and also milestone for my company, which brought me back all from my, this thing. And uh, I've, I've started uh, building missions. I gathered funds again. I've, uh, the next nine months of my journey is about building missions. I, from a scrap uh, printer look to, we were in a, we, we were spending money like Rajnikanth movie. You know this Rajnikanth movie where he spends money very faster? I was spending 16 lakh rupees in nine months. This is back in 10 years before. Uh, you can call me brave, you can call me a foolish, or you can call me very persistent. It, it's all true, all three is true. I was building this machine from scratch to a good looking product. I even did a photo shoot, and again I got stuck with the problem. The problem is, when I'm busy doing missions, I never thought about what's happening outside. There is this huge Mumbai, uh, where people have found this opportunity and they started importing 3D printers. The rate at which I could make a machine in a smaller quantity was very high priced rather than, you know, people in importing in hundreds and hundreds quantity. This is one problem in India, right? Whenever somebody starts an IT startup, they are more likely succeeding. But whenever somebody starts a hardware startup, we are suffering because of cost and a lot of things. I got into the same problem, but that didn't stop me. I decided, let's put a pass, let's get into services. Service is a wonderful thing where uh, I took a decision because I met people. I met people from every industry. I was talking to students. I was talking to doctors for a pre-surgical model. I was talking to architects for a model to everything. I was talking to aerospace people where there are designs which could only be 3D printable, not possible in CNC machining anything. I was talking, all my experiences coming from an engineer is only, only to make machines, but, but this service industry for the next years have boosted so much of knowledge. And uh, I, I like to remember one project such that this is an order from a very prestigious aerospace company. This was the first project back in 18, uh, when I'm 18 months. I got this, uh, they wanted to do a defense model of Airbus. Uh, we did it in four days. And that gave the motivation, okay, there are a lot of uh, potential in services also. And we started working with every industries. I like to say rest everything is so fast forward. We are eight and a half years old right now. We are grown, we are, our machine looks like that right now. We are doing industrial 3D printers, not the small ones. We got into the industrial 3D printers where price is never an issue for them, quality matters. And there's a lot of few projects we have done. Uh, we have built rockets for a, I mean, a model of rocket for a very prestigious rocket company in Hyderabad. We do work with architects, we work with movies. And the thing about movies is I never imagined I, I can work with movies uh, when, as an engineer. I got calls from art directors costume designers, I, uh, I, once I got a call from an assistant of a director who said uh, there is a project, there is an art director, there is a director who wants to talk to you. And this is none other than the top director of Telugu cinemas. I got an opportunity to talk to him and then got to work with him in a couple of movies. And believe me, the most successful people in this industry, they welcomed me as a very equal person. They, they sat before me, we are talking, discussing 3D printing, because everybody, every, for everybody this is new. 
And uh, that gave me a good opportunity on the table to explore in this industry. We were working for multiple movies, uh, doing from armors, uh, you know, art products for movies to building a big technical high-tech set for, uh, you know, mechanical set for movies. We were working a lot with movies also. Persistence is the key, right? So before I conclude with the technology factor again, persistence is the key. So what motivated me? So I was one among you, right? Like I, I was an engineering student. I had no idea I would start a company. All, all I have is this very uh, undying uh, desire to grow. And I always believed the corporate culture have enslaved us into the workmanship. It, it is not wrong to work somewhere, but it, it is not only the solution. If you could gather four of your friends, start a company, make income for you and other people, and if you could really solve a demand or a problem in the society, everybody could be here, uh, can be a job generator, work on a solution. And nobody, nobody comes ready, right? Everybody learns on the way. You know, people call entrepreneurs as somebody who builds a parachute on the way when they're dropping down. So in the same way, persistence is the key. You have to, you have to learn along the way, learn along the journey, and nobody is ready. And if you have no plan B, you're going to succeed. What it, what it is? People always say, have a plan B. Please, never have a plan B. The plan A and the only plan is to succeed. Or else everybody is going to close the startup. You know, you're, you're out of funds, search for funds. Take a break. You're out of team, go find a team. You're out of anything, don't take a break. Don't get demotivated. The only time when you will fail is when you quit. If you're not going to quit, you're never going to lose in your startup. So that is the one inbuilt quality I had which helped me to run a successful 3D printing company so far and we are ranked number one in Google right now and we are going pan India global. We started already exporting products and this is what I want to tell people. Persistence is the key. Keep trying, come up with good solutions and the market is so big. If there is, solution, if there is a problem, there needs to be a solution. People, more number of people can come in and, and create startups. I like to end with uh, why 3D printing is special, right? We have subtractive manufacturing. You take a piece of block, you remove material, and form a shop, form a shape. But additive manufacturing is all about building layer by layer, like, like a cake, right? Like how you make a cake, so like layer by layer. But what good thing about 3D printing is you could do impossible shapes which cannot be done in any other machining. That is the powder printing. So the powder will be stacked in between your model. When you remove, you could, you could really make impossible items. You could make high strong parts with lesser density, same strength. You could, you could, you could see this uh, tap where the water comes out of the tap, right? You see the tap is hollow because it, there are some small ventricles along the tap line where the water is coming through that. This is only possible when it is powder printing. The powder the remaining areas are taken out of it. Uh, the higher examples are this, the engines, aerospace engines. Look at the first picture where you have a lot of cooling lines. Where, look at the last picture which is 3D printed engine. All the cooling lines are eliminated, it is internally constructed and that is how aerospace is redefining the parts. Hundreds of years, the jewelry segment, aerospace segment, the way they thought how they could make parts are totally redefined with help of metal 3D printing. You could see this design freedom. You could come with impossible shapes. People are printing real rockets to go into space, aluminum metal printing. The future is no more huge setup. You're going to print rockets, aluminum directly going into space. Customization. Nobody will ask you, I mean, people will always ask you MOQ. How many parts do you want to, you want me to get, do it? But 3D printing companies don't ask you an MOQ. You, you have a kid who's nearby to your house, want one, I mean, amputated kid who wants a hand, you could design for them, customize for them, you could make for them. On-demand manufacturing. People are sending 3D printers to uh, space, International Space Station. You could print tools there. You don't need to send a rocket to send a tool. This is called on-demand manufacturing. Bio 3D printing. You don't need to wait on a donor list for the organ to come, right? The future is people have already 3D printed kidneys. You're going to get good. This is the big future. Bio 3D printing. And it is not limited to one quantity. It is, it is you can do a lot. Concrete 3D printing, temples are built great before, it was not good now, it's because of modernization. Let's bring back the details with concrete 3D printing. I want to end with my statement saying, that, saying this, we will be 3D printing rockets to send 3D printers to Mars and then to let people 3D print housing over there and also let people 3D print rockets to come back to Earth. This is the future. The possibilities are endless, thank you.